Before we get into this, I just want to leave a little disclaimer as I usually do. Please don't go and like try and witch hunt and harass this guy. He's just expressing his opinion and I did not do my own very well. Um, that is like the whole purpose of this. This video is literally only to articulate my thoughts properly outside of a YouTube comment section and explain my reasonings for giving him lips more thoroughly. And perhaps to be a bit petty. But, you know, I'm not quite sure how to start this, so I'm just gonna jump right into it. They continually brought up Spinosaurus in their argument, even though the video was on Rudy, who is a baryonyx. So, instead of talking in terms of Spinosaurus, which would, you know, probably give their argument a bit more weight, I don't know, um, we'll be talking in terms of baryonyx, because that's what the video was on. Okay, going on to their first points. They thought that spinosaurids as a whole couldn't have lips because of their tooth shape being conial and their head structure, and compared them to gharials, which are an aquatic reptile that's related to crocodilians. They finished out their reply with an asking for examples of animals with conical teeth and lips in an unspecified, probably rhetorical fashion. Now, Conical teeth are broadly defined as cone-shaped teeth, meaning that literally any tooth that at all, you know, resembles a cone could technically count as a conical tooth. Then I briefly mentioned the foramen that baryonyx have on their top and bottom lips, but we'll get more into the foramen later. Um, then they replied with a statement that my examples were incorrect and that these animals, in fact, did not have conical teeth. And this is just be me being critical here for a moment. But they then proceeded to say that whales didn't have teeth and sort of double back on that. Um, Might have just been a typing error, but you know. They then said that comparing mammals to reptiles was as apples to oranges, which is fair and totally would have made sense. If they specified reptilian examples and not, you know, animals at large. They then went on to say that the only, you know, remaining marine reptiles would be turtles and maybe sea snakes at a stretch, which is a fair take, but I was unspecifically talking more about marine iguanas here as they, you know, swim pretty constantly and have lips still. Also, you know, extinct ones like Mosasaurus and Ichthyosaurus, but that's neither here nor there, really. Then, oddly enough, in my opinion, they brought up raptors, my immediate thought being, you know, in the bird sense of things, but I, you know, read further, finished reading the comment, and it was a fair enough point, I suppose. You know, with them saying that they thought there was more evidence of raptors having lips than spinosaurids having lips, which would be a fair take, but they both have formina on their upper and lower jaws. Those are the little holes, again. Um... And what they are is basically um, attachment points for nerve endings and blood flow and such, which implies gums and also lips to a certain extent, I believe. You know, all modern um, lizards and reptiles and such that have formina tend to also have lips. Thank you, know, monitor lizards. Which isn't actually a great comparison on my end, but it is the best that I can think of, you know, off the top of my brain. And in addition to that, I feel like this observation made by Scott Hartman was pretty constructive to my side of this debate. Um, and to add on to it, you know, I think it's pretty obvious from the picture. But you see how textured the skull of this crocodilian is in comparison to how smooth the skull of this tyrannosaurid is, but also how smooth the skull of Baryonyx is. Um, the, the texture is there on crocodilian skulls to, you know, be the attachment points for the muscles there and their very, very reduced lips, like their lip tissue, that is just really cracked up sort of scales that layer up around the teeth. They also brought up, um, the fact that raptor's teeth were, like, more up and down aligned than a spinosaurus teeth, um, but baryonyx actually had very nice well um aligned teeth to them and in response to me bringing up the foramen they responded with fenestra being the technical origin of the lip issue as it were and i kind of think that was an indirect point in my favor after a bit of research i'm still not totally sure on what they mean by this but i'm assuming they're comparing like the number of fenestra that crocodilians have compared to dinosaurs if you do end up watching this please let me know i'm actually pretty curious but that's sort of where the whole conversation ended with me saying I was in support of the lip theory and didn't really expand on why, but I said I was in support of it. Um, and then just, you know, replied to their 
very first comment at this point, which was kind of silly, but I said that it, um, saying that Spinosaurus 100% didn't have lips was bad practice and also just kind of wrong. I say it's wrong because we really have no concrete evidence of them not having lips. I'm pretty sure we actually have, you know, more points in the technical favor of them having lips than not, but take that with a grain of salt. At this point, the debate was over for about 10 minutes between us, but they sent through another response that was sort of a, a nail in the coffin to their whole argument. Um, not to be rude, of course. But they said, and this is a bit paraphrased, of course, that it was ridiculous and impossible that certain dinosaurs could evolve not to have lips anymore. And they said something along the lines of crocodilians having ancestors that didn't have um, them anymore, implying that all dinosaurs were lipless, directly or indirectly, in their statement. But that is in direct contradiction to their earlier comment about raptors. You can chalk that up to human error and incorrect interpretation on my end, but really? Impossible? Of all the things dinosaurs have done, from where they started to where they've ended up, evolving into birds is fine by you, but the possibility of Spinosaurus de-evolving lips, something you didn't even want them to have in the first place, is where you draw your line. I'm really not trying to be condescending here, but come on, man. But that, you know, concludes my petty little spiel here. And just for fun, here's a semi-lipless Rudy to appease you, my dear friend. And that is where I'll end it for the night. Thanks for sitting through this. Bye.